a 4.2 litre V8. This has a 5.2 litre Lamborghini V10. That means 518 brake horsepower. Enough torque to tenderize an elephant and a top speed of about 200 miles an hour. 0 to 60 is dealt with in 3.7 seconds. That's there. 80, 90, 100, 110, 120, 125 in 8 seconds. This thing is phenomenal! The handling is pretty epic as well. driver's car, this is spectacularly good. It's like Scarlett Johansson's lips or the roof of Paddington Station. Absolutely faultless. Oh, God, it's good. Like most supercars, it's not even desperately impractical. You get a boot, which is big enough for three medium-sized goats. You get a useful shelf behind the seats, and you get room inside to move about and breathe. There are a couple of mistakes, I admit. Uh, if, for instance, you have a, a can of tangy, refreshing drink here in the cup holder, and you go to change gear, your elbow's going to knock it over, and that's annoying. And, as far as I can work out, the trip computer isn't working. I don't like to say that, obviously, because it will have been installed by a German who'll be shot at dawn for his mistake, but it... it doesn't. And then there's the biggest mistake of them all, the price. It's £100,000. And that's just the start. If you want ceramic brakes, £7,000. Flappy paddle gearbox, £5,000. If you want the boot lined in fake suede, £1,600. Bucket seats, £2,350. Colour-coordinated seat belts, 750 quid. If you want these panels here, finished in carbon fibre, you're mad. Mad as a Mexican's dog. They even charge £500 if you want to pick the car up from the factory yourself. That's like charging someone £10 extra for a bottle of wine if you tread the grapes yourself. I'd tell them to get lost. Strangely, however, it's not the money that would stop me buying this car. The trouble is is it's a bit too joyless, a bit too like Scarlett Johansson's lips. You can never imagine this thing smiling. I mean, look what happens, OK, if I hit this button here. Sport mode on, exclamation mark. What's it got an exclamation mark for? You put the sport on in a supercar, you mad, crazy fool, you. Look at the sat-nav, OK? It can take you to a bank or a bowling alley or a bus station. I'm sorry, golf course. It's a historical monument. Yes, I've got a supercar, but I'm going to stop off and look at this Neolithic fort. The R8 V10, then, doesn't really do fun. It doesn't do pantomime. So if I were spending £100,000 on a car, I'd think very seriously about buying something worse. Which is extremely fast. <laughs> this has a supercharged 6.2 litre engine, which is a turbo compared to Audi's 5.2 litre unsupercharged COD. <laughs>
Put it in a drag race with the R8, and the results are inevitable. I have got 120 more horsepower than the R8. And because the Corvette is made from plastic, it's lighter as well. If only America could win its war so convincingly. However, there are a few problems. I tested one in America last year, and um, after three days, it was starting to fall apart. And then on the fourth, it refused to start. It's also insanely vulgar. It's only available with left-hand drive. The luggage cover looks like a motel shower curtain. It's much too wide, and in the corners, it's a complete madman. When I drove this thing in California, I loved it. I think it might have been a holiday romance because here on our track, it's, it's, well, let's be kind, let's say difficult. Remember, I've got more power than a Ferrari Enzo. Oh, my God. Come on, get a straight line! They have more firepower, but trying to keep up with the Audi is like trying to win the Grand National whilst riding a lion that's made out of teeth and jelly. It sort of wobbles about, and then if you're not careful, it bites your arm off. Ah. Oh, no, I've gone, I've gone! <laughs> the thing is, though, despite the waywardness and the terrible danger, the Corvette is more fun. It's disintegrating already. This is... I'm being strangled by my own seatbelt and the ends come off. Get on! Be in no doubt, then, the Audi is a better car. It's better built, better to look at, better to drive, more comfortable, easier to park and, in the real world, faster. You'd have to be bonkers to buy the Corvette. And that is why you should.